Hello everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you've had a wonderful day. It's been clouding up here today and a lot of the leaves have fallen off the trees. And as I would say back in my kindergarten teaching days, like Winnie the Pooh, we're having a blustery day. And it's really kind of fun though. It, I don't know, it just looks like... Um, you know, fall has definitely kicked in, and we know what's right around the corner. And since my craft fair is one week from today, ladies, I'm just like, ooh, but I'm getting there. I am getting there. And so today, what I want to do is um, share with you some of the things, some things that I had left over from last year. I have to say, I really did not have that many things from last year, so... This year, I really had to kind of start from scratch and start building my inventory again. So anyway, I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've made. Some are like what I made last year that I had good luck with. So I'll share those with you. Let's start with... Okay. This is... Let me move this up a little bit. I've made these... I've made them actually for three years, but each year has been just a little bit different. These are more similar to the ones I made last year. These little boxes I got at the Dollar Tree. And this lace I had at uh, in my stash that I had purchased from Hobby Lobby. This ribbon I purchased from Hobby Lobby. It's kind of a Christmas and gold. Inside, I made my honey oatmeal almond soap. So I put two bars of that in there. It's kind of bee themed. You can see that a little bit. And then I put a little uh, scrubby glove in there and I tied ribbon around that. And then in this little baggie, I'm going to pull this out. I made a lavender sachet, and I put them in a baggie, so that helps keep the scent in, and it smells so good. I found this fabric at um, Hobby Lobby, I believe, or Joann's, I can't say for sure, and I stamped on it, and then uh, filled it with infused rice. Now, the way I do this, since I really don't have, you know, vanilla buds or anything like that to put in it, like you do lavender... <laughs> You take your rice and you put it in the freezer. And I've had mine in the freezer a long time, but I would say at least two weeks. And that makes sure that if there are any, you know, bow weevils or moths or anything like that in your grain, that's going to kill them for sure. So anyway, I did that. And then I had a stamp that says, life is a beautiful ride. And here is like a, a little bicycle that I stamped on there as well. And then I took my rice and however much you want to make, you just put that, I put mine in like a Dollar Tree, like a uh, plastic container. And then I poured vanilla scent essential oils over it. And I get my essential oils from Nature's Garden, but I know you can probably pick that up at Walmart or any of your uh, crafting stores. So that's my little vanilla sachet and I've got some kind of natural shred in the bottom and then I just took this little flower like I said I keep vases of flowers in my crafting area so solely for this purpose that when I'm making a craft or something and I might need something as a little embellishment I just cut off one of those stems and tie it on there and I took ribbon for the bottom with hot glue and wrapped that around so it doesn't have just a you know a raw stem showing there where you've chopped it off with your wire cutters and I will be selling these for probably gonna sell these for I'm gonna put ten dollars on them I may come down last year I sold them for seven I had no problem selling them at all but the container's a little larger. My sachet is a little larger. And so I think I'm going to go with 10 this year on those. Now, the other one I made was one for lavender. And, you know, I just realized on this particular one, I haven't put the tag on there. So I'm going to have to tie the tag on there. But I'll show you what the tag looks like on something else I made. 
This one is a lavender. Again, I got the box from the Dollar Tree. It was natural wood, and I painted it. And we've all probably had some of this trim <laughs> in our stash from Hobby Lobby. It came in lots and lots of different colors, and it was so pretty. I think I bought every color they had. So, you know, I was glad that I came up with the idea to use that to go around the edges. And then inside, again, I have two lavender bars of soap. This one is the little cherub. Isn't that cute? I have molds, and I bought those off of Amazon a few years back. And here is a heart mold, and it smells whoops, really good. Oh, excuse me. There we go. Lay those back in there. And then this tag I had, and I'm pretty sure I got these from Etsy probably two or three years ago, but the boxes I used last year were a lot smaller, and this was just too much for it, so I didn't use those. Again, I have this ribbon, and this came off of a, a little bunch of purple flowers I had purchased at some time, and kind of looked like lavender, not really, but <laughs> it's little beads instead of the flowers, but you get the point. And then here again, I have a little lavender uh, scrubby glove. And then this one on the sachet. Now this one, I did the infused rice as well as the lavender buds. You can order lavender buds from Amazon and you get a large bag of them. It's going to see. Hold on, I'll show you. sorry that was my light okay here's one of the sizes of bags you can get and uh, this is lavender buds and you can also get a big plastic bag so there's quite a bit in there and it comes sealed and it's a lined bag so it stays pretty fresh in there sorry that took me a while to get to and like I said I just I sew up three sides then from the bottom, I stuff in the infused rice. Then uh, quite a few buds and the infused rice and end with some buds. I kind of layer it up. Tie it with a little bow. Oh, and it smells good. And like I said, I always bag these up because I don't want the scent going out. And if people don't like it, they probably don't want to come in your booth and smell it. So some people like lavender and some people really don't care for it. This is actually lavender vanilla. I put vanilla in with it. So here's that little box. And again, I'm gonna put $10 on that. And now, let me get these out of the way. If you watch my videos, you've probably seen some of these things that I purchased in hauls. And so I had purchased these at the end of the summer, these little containers, and they're just as cute as they can be. They were raw wood, and so I just took some, I think it was spray paint, kind of an almond color of spray paint, just kind of sprayed around that. Inside it's going to have an infused vanilla sachet, and I put this on there that indicates vanilla. In the back here, I don't know if you can see, there's a little white hand towel that I folded up. It's in the back. And then in the top, there are three, okay, I may have stuck those together because they were wanting to fall out. <laughs> there are three bars of soap of the Honey Oatmeal Almond Soap. And then this little packet, I found these at a little boutique. I thought that would be just perfect to put in there. The Naked Bee, all the good stuff, none of the bad stuff, moisturizing hand and body lotion, orange blossom honey. So I put one of those in there. And I think those were like 89 cents, so it wasn't too bad. But I thought it really added to it. Then I had some little ornaments in my stash I just tied 
to the front to give it a little bit of a Christmas feel. Here's the tag on this one that I made on my Cricut. And it's a B. It says, be well, be kind, be sweet, be loving, and be strong. And I thought that was such a cute little saying to go on my tag. And then I also went in Design Space and found this little border down here that I liked and I lightened it up quite a bit. So I tell you, this year I have used my Cricut, I think more than I ever have for lots of different things. So if you're on the fence about getting a Cricut, I would say go for it. Now I have the Cricut Maker and right now, since they've come out with the Cricut Maker 3, the Cricut Maker has really gone down in price. Now the Maker 3 supposedly is faster and you can use smart vinyl on it, which that's very tempting to me because I love my Joy because you can use a smart vinyl. You don't have to worry about mats. But the thing is with the Joy, it will cut long strips, but you're limited to the size of what you can cut on it. And just think with a big Cricut Maker 3, you can make big things for signs and just use your smart vinyl and not have to worry about you know having to load up your mats and is the mat sticky enough and that kind of thing so anyway and the this was in the ribbon section i don't know if you've seen this at hobby lobby and i wish i had bought more of it it's, it's kind of almost like a well, it's definitely cloth, and there's no seam on the sides, and I want to say crepe, but it really isn't crepe. It's just a lightweight fabric ribbon, and I just love it for this. I thought it, it went real well with this. So, on this, I'm probably going to ask 15, and like I said, I may have to go down, but I'm going to start with 15, and we'll see how that goes. You can tell me what you think about those prices. And then there's this other style they had. They only had three of these left, and I scooped them up. I don't remember how much they were that I actually paid for them, but I know they were either 50 or 75% off, like I said, at um, Joann's. I don't know if I said Michael's, but I'm pretty sure it was Joann's. And on this one, I've got lavender. This lavender bow is going to tell me that the sachet is lavender in here so i've got it um the buds and the infused rice and i went ahead and put a b on it since this is b themed but this will tell me that the sachet is actually lavender i put a piece of lavender up uh embellishment up there flower inside again there are three bars of the bee soap Again, the little hand cream. Again, the cute little tag. I had this ornament in my stash. I just tied that on, like I said, to give it a little Christmas feel. And again, this was the last piece of the ribbon. <laughs> this was the end of the spool to make this bow. I just love this fabric ribbon. I'm telling you, ladies, I do. So when I made the last one here, I had this ribbon in my stash, and you know what? I think it goes really well, too. It's, it's kind of a burlap wire ribbon, and I also got that at Hobby Lobby. I've had it in my stash a while, and I tell you, I have used up so many things in my stash this year, too. Every time I go to my ribbon drawers, I think, oh, man, do I have that color? And sure enough, I'll come up with something I can use, and then I'm really thankful that when Hobby Lobby has their 50% off on their ribbon that I have stocked up on that. It's got the same thing inside, little hand towel, the lotion, the sachet, and three bars of soap. Same cute little tag, like I said, lavender, and this cute bow on the top. And again, I'm going 15 for these. We shall see. Now, what else do I want to share? Okay, I want to share this. I did not do a tutorial on this. I don't think. <laughs> if I did, just excuse me. My, my brain's been a little bit on overload lately. But these I found at the Dollar Tree. These little wooden easels. They still have a whole bunch of them. And I thought, surely you could do something with that. So I took that. And what I did was I took some Buffalo Check Red and Black. I took the ribbon and I went around 
all the edges and the legs. And then at the top, I put a couple of uh, strands across the top and I just made this fold up little bow. And then I made this off of my Cricut. This is uh, vinyl. Copy and friends make the perfect blend. So I thought that was cute. You know, you could stand that up in your kitchen. If you have a coffee bar, you could stand that up by your coffee bar. I made this one. And this one I'd had, at the time I made this, I wanted to do the black and white check, but I didn't have any left. And I wanted to go ahead and get it made. So I had the green and the kind of cream color. And I think that's cute too. I think green is really cute. So I did the same thing covered the legs and the front i just put one stripe at the bottom now the way i cover these legs like i've said in some of my other videos i just take my double-sided tape run it around and the, my ribbon then i just press it on there and it's not going anywhere unless you grab it and try to peel it off so this one says a cup of coffee with a shared friend is happiness tasted and time well spent. So I got these and um, I think I'm only going to put like $3 on these because, you know, it didn't cost me much to make all this. And I just think they're really cute. We'll see if they sell or not. So that might be an idea that you might want to try. Now, let's see from last year. Last year, I don't know if you recall, but I made these out of little picture frames. And I only made these three. And I started out with $10 this year. I'm going to go $6.50 and I may go down to less than that because I didn't sell one of them. And I thought they were really cute. <laughs> I really liked the way I put that little tassel on there. And this one didn't even get to go out because when I got down there or when I was packing, I don't remember, one, I think it was this gingerbread had fallen off, this little gingerbread cookie thing, and I couldn't even find it. And then when I was going through the stuff to see what I had left from last year, I found it. So I just uh, E6000 it on this year because, like I said, when you're hauling stuff around, you're just using hot glue, that can snap off of there so easily. So I've got these three to put back. Now, from last year... I made these little uh, Christmas planners, and they were a lot of work for me because I had to go into my Microsoft something. I don't know. It doesn't work anymore. I had trouble with it then, so it was a lot of work for me. So anyway, and this I used my cinch machine, and I love these, And but I was going to sell these for $8, and I think I made like 10 or something like that. I did not sell one, so I'm going to mark these way down. Maybe I can sell them this year, and I deliberately did not put a date on the calendar, so you'll have to fill in the days on your calendar, but that's good because if I had put the days in, then it would not be good for this year. So this was it, the Christmas planner, and this I made on my Cricut, that page, these I think I made in Microsoft something or other. But as I said, I did not write in the days. And this is just like a Christmas card tracker. I'm going to use one of these issues because I like to know who I get cards from to make sure I reciprocate. I have a pretty long list and I usually get everybody on there. And then this is good, like especially if you have an extended family or, you know, if you draw names or party gifts or something you can always mark that out but you can put on here you know who it is what's their stocking stuff or maybe the gifts and what you've ordered online so you can keep up with that when that comes in and i put several pages of that in there because you can use this you know for another year if you want to then some notes christmas traditions to write down some of the things you like to do at christmas usually when we make the tree, or make the tree, when we decorate the tree, my husband's kind of in charge of decorating the tree. Not that I've assigned that to him. He just likes to do it, and he has this way of just getting everything in just the right place. So he does the tree, and I'll usually try to make fudge or hot cocoa or, you know, something Christmassy and put on Christmas music or a Christmas movie. 
and more traditions, special gifts, like if you want to remember to get a gift for a teacher, friend, neighbors, or hairstylist, a hostess gift, you can write that down and keep track of that. Things to do, Christmas cards, have you done those? You can check that off. Santa letters, stocking stuffers, plan your Christmas menu, Christmas Eve plans, Christmas breakfast, Christmas movie night, see Christmas lights, go out and drive around cookies, wrap gifts, kids Christmas Eve box, so you can know if you have planned for all of that. And then these are just remember to do Christmas Eve, Christmas breakfast, Christmas day, so you get all of that organized and your notes, and then what plans you have for New Year's Eve. So that was kind of my planner. And on this back, there's a little pocket, like if you have favorite recipes you want to try or that you use every year, you can stick those in there. There's also a pocket on the back. So I thought that was cute, but I maybe I overpriced it. I really didn't, but, you know, maybe I did. I don't know. I don't think I did, but here we go. Now, these were leftover from a couple years ago. I didn't take them last year, but they're just little uh, notepads that I, you know, covered to make them look Christmassy. And I had picked these up at the Dollar Tree, little ink pens. And I'm gonna sell these for $1.50. I've got, I think, maybe four more of those. Um, this little box, I did a tutorial on this. This is my happy birthday planner. And it's got a little file for every month so you can keep names. And if you have the card already, you can just poke it in there and know that it's ready to go. And I'm gonna sell this for 15. And let me reach back here. Sorry if I got in the way, I'm sure I probably did. These were a big seller last year. Last year I made 11 of these. This year I only have 10. These are my tea packets. This is all Anna Griffin embellishments and Anna Griffin paper that I had in my stash. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to use it up. This little um, tag on the front, you go into Cricut and it will print out each uh, little layer for you in whatever color you choose. I went ahead with the uh, basic traditional colors because I didn't want to take the time to try to match every box with every color. So anyway, this worked. And I just love this foiled paper. Isn't that pretty? And then what I did to uh, close it for the closure, I used some of my crinkly seam binding that you get from Ca Cabin Creek. Is that right? I think Cabin Creek. I think that's right. And instead of putting a Velcro closure on the back, because last year, you know, people kept wanting to see what was inside. And by the time you keep opening, closing, opening, closing, your Velcro gets a little worn. So I thought this way you can just untie it and that ribbon's going to be secured on there with this little tag. You open it and this is the card. And this is made from Anna Griffin's teacup pop-up card. And on the front, I've embellished it. It says, wishing you all the wonder of the holiday season. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And then when you open it, of course, you're going to have your teacup that pops up. And there I've put two bags of tea. I didn't go with uh, flavored teas this year because a lot of people just really prefer your basic teas. I went with the English breakfast and the Earl Grey. And then I put a little package of the Milano cookies in there. And these little spoons you can pick up at the Dollar Tree. I tie a little bow on that to tie in there. These are tags that I had purchased from uh, Anna Griffin. They're little holiday tags. So I just picked one and you can write on the back of that, you know, your little Christmas message, who it's to, who it's from. And I just put that down in the little teacup. And it's embellished with, like I said, Anna Griffin embellishments. There's like a border dye, some of her ornament wreaths and her corners that you can get. And this little napkin. I just love this little napkin dye. I think that is so pretty. So anyway, I get got two of those. And I'm going to show you both just because I think they're so pretty. <laughs> And I'm going to charge 
$7 for those. That's what I charged last year. And I sold them all. And I kind of based that on if I make a card and it's Anna Griffin and I'm using all of her papers and embellishments and everything like that, I usually charge $5. And you know that if you purchase one of her card kits, they're fairly expensive. So I only usually make about half of it because that's, uh, you know, gives me a variety and that way I don't have all the same. And the others, sometimes I give them away, sell them or make more for the next year. So anyway, there's one. And here is another one. Funny, I had the gold ribbon for both. Oh, don't you love this paper? I love her black paper with the floral on it. So let me pull this out. I've tried to match the envelopes with the cards using the uh, double-sided paper. You can do one in one side and one in the other side. And this one simply says Season's Greetings, but I've used her dies and embellishment. This actually is one layer on the front. That's one of her card toppers. And that's really nice uh, to put on these. That way you don't have to hunt up a bunch of different things and it keeps the uh, thickness of it down just a little bit since you've already got thickness going on the inside. So when you open that up, oh, this is so pretty. See how she's got that little bird, little robin sitting on that green uh, branch of holly and berries. And then here down here is a little gift. And there's another little bird down there. And again, wishing you a Merry Christmas. They don't all say that, even though these two that I picked to share, they do say the same thing, don't they? And again, there's my little spoon. Just tied some little ribbon around that. So that is also that one. And on this one, I also took ribbon. And I ran it up the back and up down the front, even though you can't see it because this is over it. And then I tied a bow and glued that onto the top, but I think that's very pretty and festive looking. Let's see if we can get this back in the box. But anyway, what I was saying about the price, um, you know, if you buy her things, you, you know you're getting nice things. So like I said, I usually charge Five dollars for the card alone and with this I actually you know made a gift box to put it in and the gift box pattern is from um, it's not really a pattern it's a little chart you use but I used um, Sara Davies crafters companion her box making kind of like a scoreboard type thing but anyway it comes with instructions on how to gauge what size of box you need for the size of whatever you're putting in it. And it comes in really handy. So that's how I got the box. And then on top of making the gift box, the card, you've got, you know, your little treat, your cookies on the inside. You've got your tea, your little message card, and a little spoon. So I think $7, it's probably a fair price for that. Now, another thing I did last year, and I thought these were so cute, and you guys commented on them, and you thought they were so cute. I didn't sell one of these either. <laughs> Not one. If you recall, I have a tutorial on these. These were made out of cards. They just took cards that I had purchased at Hobby Lobby or wherever and kind of uh, scored down the center that would be it if it was tied how cute is that I mean that's very cute and I used even my uh, crocodile to put little eyelets in there on that side so anyway when you untie it you can see that I had scored like a quarter inch down each as uh, well let's see you do the fold on each side of the fold you score a quarter of an inch and then you know you can hook, pull that together with your closure ribbon and then I put a little calendar in there and I thought oh, these are darling well it didn't sell so of course I can't use these again with the calendar but what I think I'm going to do I'm going to remove the calendar and I looked in my stash and I have still these uh, little 
sticky note pads from Dollar Tree and they're little different colors and they're thin. So I thought, you know, I'm just gonna put one of these in there where the calendar was, one of these little thin ones, and I may add a pin to it. And we're gonna try it again and see what happens. And I also have some of these in my stash or I could put, you know, double tablets. I don't know, but I think I'm going with the, um, the sticky note pads. So we shall see how that goes. I need to kind of remake those. Now, the last thing I want to share is on my Cricut. Okay, I'm going to have to raise this up for you to be able to see this. Last year at Hobby Lobby, it's probably last spring, I was in a different town, and we have them at our Hobby Lobby too, so I'm sure they all have them. I had purchased this chalkboard. This chalkboard, I think, was $19.99, and I got it either for 40 or 50% off. I think 50 And what I did was I went on my Cricut, and I just love the saying, it's the little things that count, or it's the little things that mean a lot, because my booth, that's what I tell people. When they start wandering by or they get curious and start coming in, I'll just say, my booth is mostly just the little things. It's like the favors and the stocking stuffers and things like that. If you're looking for just a little something, I might have that for you. And so I made this off of my Cricut, and then I added this bead hanger to the top. It's hard to get all that in there. And I think I'm going to put 25 on that. I may come down to 2250, but if you would have purchased this 19.99, then add all the other to it. I don't know. I may do 2250 on that. What do you guys think? It's cute. I think it's cute. In fact, if it doesn't sell, I will keep it because like I said, I love that saying and I think that would be cute to have in my um craft fair booth. So I think, let me look around. That's all I have to share for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit some of my home decor things and hopefully I will get several of those made and be able to share those with you before my craft fair. I go up next Thursday to set up and then I'll spend the night in Branson, get up bright and early and have a full day from nine to six on Friday and nine to four on Sunday. And she's been giving us updates all the time. And this next year, she said they're going to do three days. So I'm really going to have to get going if I'm going to participate in that one. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please like it. That helps my channel. And, uh, you know, if you like, have friends who enjoy watching craft videos and might want to pick up some ideas for their craft fair, just send them over and tell them if they like it to uh, please subscribe and I would appreciate it very, very much. So you all have a good evening. Like I said, I am going to get started on making some fun little home decorations. And like I said, I want to share those with you hopefully soon. So enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, bye-bye.